sort of indicates the uh, the technology itself already existing. It's convenience you bring to all my yes. to everybody. Um, is there any concern that somehow the current hospital providers uh, can get into the space quickly, uh, competing with you or something like that? Sure, sure. So that's a good question. So yes, so the first is that technology is the same thing. So actually FDA has approved the more than 200 biomarkers based on this technology and this technology has been on the market for like more than 10 years. And the difference is like one thing is that we can make it so small. So and this, you know, we have this 30 people work on there for almost three years to get to where we are today. So even someone wants to start today, they could, right? Mm -hmm. And it's probably going to take them at least like one or two years to get, get that technology level mm -hmm. and the second thing is really on the registration uh, because the you know it's a cost two in CFDA and you have to build a manufacturing plant all this thing so that will probably take another year or two and the third thing which I think is most important is like we pretty much redefine the product concept so the product itself has two parts one is like how accurate you measure mm -hmm. and the second is like how do you really tell the consumer how does the consumer why is the consumer gonna feel this accurate it's different from if the product is accurate by itself or not and also how do you interpret the data right and for that part I think a lot the B2B, you know, medical equipment company will be really hard to get into because that's totally like a different different concept and dif different expertise. So to answer your question, I think, yes, especially in China, there could be always people wants to copy, mm -hmm. but the way we're doing is like we, you know, we execute really fast. So we're leading the race. So that's how we, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, deal with the, the reverse engineering situation. Me too. Sure. So I just want to show you guys the product really quick and answer a question. So basically, that's a that's a mirror product, and you can see it's it's really small. It's really small. It's face uh, you know the woman's palm size, and also one well, this this is waterproof and dustproof. And you can imagine when they're using in their uh you know in the in the in their bathroom or in the shower room. So what they do is like uh, let me change this. So what they do is like when they purchase the test strip, and test strip is a one-time use thing, it's a disposable, so reoccurring revenue, and the test strip will be looking like this. So they will pee on this side, or dip into their urine, like a cup of urine on this side. And then they will reverse the cup, so there's no contamination, and there's lateral flow technology inside, so which means the hormone will be automatically flow towards this side. And at the back, we have a chip. This is our, you know, our pattern chip. So we have this is our information capturing system, tracking system. And then you will insert the test one into the mirror analyzer. And the analyzer will start to do the reading. So now you can see there's a countdown in here. You can also feel, if you want to show, feel by your hands. It's a little bit shaking because it's scanning inside. And then after this is done, so after this is done, the data will be synchronized to the mirror app, and which will look like the, you know, the slide I showed. So Angela had a question? Yes, yeah, so, um, you know, um, I'm so glad to see you again. Sure. We have each other for like more than a year. So I see a lot of good progress. So I, um, again, we see very crowded space. And okay. before you start with this company, some of the concepts are they existing in, in the market. So how, what, what's your strategy to be in the market share? In terms of pricing, what's the market strategy? And also you want to sell through the B2B to C model and what what's required for you to better lots to uh, like clues for other other kind of communication other than this one. Sure. So sure, sure. So let me answer in few folks and each you know China US market they're different. So in the U.S. market, so the first thing is like yes, there are a lot of things trying to people trying to you know go into this space to help with the you know the pregnancy test or so on. But you think about it was why everyone's jumping into this. Obviously, there are pain points over here. We all know about that. And we are the most accurate technology in this market in the, in terms of consumer facing application, right? Because all the OPK is qualitative. If you by naked eye, you know, use that test strip and compare the you know darker line or lighter line, and the oh, the temperature sensor really talk about that. So based on the you know the technology itself, we can provide them the 
the most accurate and the most personalized way. So that means a lot of, in a lot of pain points right now for the existing products that, oh, it doesn't really capture my peak. That's because everyone has a different curve. Everyone has a different threshold. So the technology wise and accuracy wise, basically effective wise, we should be the most, uh, you know, the best one. And the second thing is like in, in, in terms of B2B2C, it doesn't require any different registration. So what really is, is, is like in the US, you cannot give doctor money incentive to do so, but you can say, let's publish a study together, and you know, our product, by using our product versus competitor product, and if your patient has better outcome, more satisfaction, better control on getting pregnancy, or whatsoever, right? So it's your patient outcome. And that's why we're going to a lot of medical conference. So, you know, we, we see this kind of data. So they will endorse you. And once they endorse you, and this will become, a, you know, your material, like your data is your material, and you can do marketing towards a consumer. So that's on the US part. And also in China, it's really different. So the B2C is what you have to do, but also the B2B2C is really strong. So you know that almost the, you know, almost all the big pharmaceutical companies are selling their consumer facing OTC drugs through the doctor, right? So that's really like, you know, what kind of channel do you want to play? So currently we're really talking with the actually two really ones the top fifth pharmaceutical company in China, public, and other one is the world's biggest sequencing center. So they, they have really strong, you know, intention to co-distribute with us. They see this one as an opportunity. So the B2B2C channel in China is really, it's, it's about, you know, where, which channel you pick up. It's not about you don't have a market or you do have a market in that sense. And the another layer, the, the last layer to answer your question is, you know, in addition to the just the, you know, like a fertility product, you see how many different applications this one could do, right? So obviously we're still doing research to see how to prioritize or so on. But this is really different than a traditional, let's say, OPK, just like a, you know, that has test straight, right? I do the ovulation and then I'm done, so what, what's next? So that's really totally different play. So actually in the future, what we really <coughs> picture is that eventually, you know, the probably the data value, you know, when you have so many different applications, women's disease or so on, the data we collect that, that value probably eventually gonna exceed the product sales value, but that's when the business become more mature, right? Think about, it's a continuous data for the woman before they got pregnant, until pregnant, even after giving birth, right? And also the, um, you know, with the, 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 you know, the quantity, and that will be a huge value for pharmaceutical companies and research insurance or so on. Hope that answers your question. That's a lot of questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, so when is the product going to be launched in the US? So and we're price. sure, sure. So we're actually doing pre pre launch in July. So and then we will start to ship about about late September. Uh, so that's usually you know that's usually time frame that too early is gonna lose interest. And the price point right now is the we have a starter kit, so which is one device plus ten test ones. So 10 test ones for probably 85% women can cover one month's testing. And that is 199, 199 US dollars. Um, yeah, and that's the, and then the, after we launch, we'll do, you know, other, all kinds of other tricks. And people do referral program, you know, I refer to you, you get some discount, and or like uh, um, financing, all of you are doing financing, so yeah. So extra, how about the extra strips, how much? So extra strip is about $2 each. $2. Yeah. But that also depends on marketing program later. Yeah. Time for one more question. Did you have one? Yeah. So, yes. so just want to make sure that uh, I understand correctly. Uh, your product essentially takes the same measurement like the one that people can get if you do more money and buy the test, right? But what you did is you digitize that, the, the readings and uh, save it in the cloud so that people can see the trend and uh, make the information. Am I right? So the answer is yes and no. So the hormone we're detecting is the same thing. So it's always, it's always trying to say, oh, outreach hormone surge and you're gonna ovulate. But the technology is totally different. So the reason the, the pharmacy one cannot really digitize is not because they don't want to digitize, it's because that technology doesn't provide you that accuracy. So what they do is like they basically draw a line here. Let me say, let, let's just assume, right? So your hormone range is from a zero to 70. They draw a range in the middle and say, today you're above 35 or you're below 35. If you're above, I call you positive, and if you're below, I call you just negative. So you can only say two things. 
they are unable to go to a detailed level to say now you're 34, you're 35, or it's, you know, it's 50 or something. It's not able to obtain that level. So first, you have to get that data, and then we, the technology we use are able to get that data, and that's the same technology that's happened in the hospital. And just because we have the data, so we have a curve, so AI can learn, machine learning, your algorithm can learn. If you just have two, you know, two points above or below, there's no way the AI can learn. So that's the difference. Does that answer the question? Okay. Uh, yeah, thank, you. thank you so much. Let's leave that. So this is a wonderful product, and I think that it's going to help a lot of people have a family, hopefully. Um, so up next, we have Cocoon Cam. And then on deck is WatchRx. So it's going to be about 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. Um, can you plug this in? Oh, sorry. We don't. Just one second, guys. Hello, everyone. I'm Siva. Hello. <laughs> that can sense a person's breathing, heart rate, temperature, and other vitals. There's no wearables attached. Um, and so uh, this is what we make. Our first product is a baby monitor. The reason it all started is because I have my daughter, Lena. Uh, as you can see here, she's sleeping in the crib. And as many of you guys who are parents who have noticed, you can't really tell what's going on. Uh, so me being an engineer, I used to work at Tesla. Uh, if you're driving a Model X, you have one of my key fobs. But while I was doing that, I was trying to figure out if my daughter was okay in the crib. And so I started building things. And the first thing I built was a wearable. Uh, the good thing was that my wife didn't let me put that on my daughter. Uh, then other people started building those, and you can see on the right-hand side, there's an actual competitor of ours it's called Owlet. They make a sock that is placed on the baby's foot. But the problem is they have uh, issues where the LED that they use to measure the baby's uh, pulse is actually burning the baby's skin or causing uh, uh, blisters. So I decided to do something completely non-contact. And the first thing I tried was radar, which obviously you don't want to blast radar on your baby. Uh, the, the, the thing that was funny was we had a camera, and that's when I met my co-founder, Pavan. He has over eight years of experience with computer vision. So since we already had a camera, we decided to make some algorithms that you know can sense if the baby is actually breathing. And so that's what we did. So we, we have Kikun Cam here. So you can buy this on Amazon, Target, Babies R Us, and things like that. And so what it does is you mount the camera above the baby's crib and you can actually see the baby's breathing. Um, so kind of a demo of this. Uh, so you mount the baby sleeping there, and the app is actually showing you the baby's breathing. There's nothing attached to the baby. There's nothing on, underneath the mattress. It's just computer vision looking at the baby. And, and the cool thing is since we know and we look at the baby all the time, we're able to tell exactly when the baby wakes up, when they go to sleep, and things like that using the respiration. So I'm sure you guys are all wondering how it works. So this is how it works. Uh, so this is my son now. Uh, my, uh, basically, what you see is sleeping there. And the thing that the computer vision is looking at is the blue pixel right here. So it's looking at the whole frame and it's trying to figure out where exactly is the breathing. And you're able to see where it can detect his chest going up and down. 
And this, this is what we had about a year ago. Um, the, the problem with this algorithm is as soon as he starts moving, it needs to recalibrate, and, and, and parents don't like that. They don't actually wait. <laughs> so we had to innovate. This is what's the now. Um, so we had to do a lot more things. So a few things that are going on here. We had to know where exactly the baby is at all times. So we do facial recognition, not normal facial recognition, baby face recognition. So this is what this blue square is looking for. Once it finds the baby, the white circle is made. And now, now that you know where the baby's head is, you can much more accurately say uh, where the breathing regions are. And there's other things. So another important thing, so the last slide, there was actually, we knew exactly how the chest was rising, but we didn't have the, the fidelity to tell what the respiration rate was. So here you can also tell exact respiration rates. And there's more things to track, you know, if the baby is going into the crib or going out, um, just lots of things. Um, so now looking in a historical perspective, if you look at this respiration rate over time, so this is my son's breathing rate over a week or so. And what you can see here is he normally breathes around 22 times a minute. But then, this is the day we went to Ikea, and you can tell he actually got sick that day. So he was tired or, or something, he caught something. And this is the day that he actually was sick. We could feel that he had a fever, but the respiration rate also shows us this. Um, this pattern now is being analyzed by our AI to understand it and is able to give you alerts when it thinks the baby is actually sick. So now moving forward, this is now a little bit shorter from a week to two days now, two and a half days or so. Now just looking at the respiration here, what we are able to tell you is exactly how the baby is sleeping. So when they fell asleep, when they woke up, and when they woke up and they were still in the crib. So you can actually very uh, accurately measure their sleep cycles. So this now, this is what we're launching in the next month or two, uh, showing you in our app. And we're able to give you all of these times and tell you how to improve, you know, how to get them to sleep better. Um, so to validate all of this technology, we've been doing studies at Stanford and UC San Diego. So if you go to the Lucille Packard Hospital here um, and go to the NICU, you'll find our cameras there. So what we're doing is comparing how our cameras, our technology works with an actual medical device. So $20 camera versus $30,000 medical device. And at the end of 2016, we proved we had 90% accuracy in doing all the measurements. Um, and since then, we've come much closer. So this is now going a step further. This is the baby in the NICU. What we're able to show you is obviously the breathing rate. Uh, but now we can also detect the baby's pulse rate. Uh, and the interesting thing here is we have all the EMR data from these babies. We know what the contact-based sensors are doing. And now we're accurate enough where we can, from the computer vision, we're actually able to detect both of these algorithms very, very um, comparable to the EMR systems. So the numbers that we detect here are exactly the same. So if you look at now going to the go-to-market strategy, uh, you can go buy Cocoon Cam already at Amazon, Babies R Us, Target, um, Walmart, Bye Bye Baby is coming up, and other retailers are coming. Um, so this is our new product. Basically, what we learned is that with our current camera, when you give anybody a normal IP camera, they will put it anywhere they want. So that's not what is good for computer vision. So we have to instruct the users exactly how to place them every single time. With this new product, it has a stand. So you can place it, you can take it with you. It's height adjustable, so it fits with your bassinet and the crib. Um, and it looks beautiful. <laughs> uh, so as, as it has a stand, so it's height adjustable again, as I said before. Um, along with this, we're doing a complete overhaul of our uh, app um, that's more user-friendly. Um, there's all the sleep analytics that we're going to be displaying. Um, I'm happy to demo this. I have this on my son, so he's actually sleeping right now. <laughs> um, so if you look at our competition, basically, 
uh, you have all the normal baby monitors all in this section. Um, so these are your Motorola summer infant. They're just IP cameras and a display do really nothing else. Um, then all the wearables down here, we don't consider them to be safe. Uh, so we don't recommend you use those. Now there are the newer um, computer vision type of baby monitors where they're measuring sleep, but the problem is they use motion to detect sleep, not actual respiration. So that's why we have our uh, cocoon cam uses actual, it's almost getting like a sleep study done on your baby every single day. So in terms of the company, we have all of these technology where we detect, you know, breathing, heart rate, temperature, movement, sleep, and position. We analyze that and we're able to actually give you uh, actionable insights. So looking forward, as we're thinking about, you know, five, three, five years down the road, since we look at the baby every single day, what we're able to do is actually track how the baby is physically growing over time. Um, then, you know, now we've been analyzing the baby's audio, so understanding what the baby, how the baby's crying. Is the baby hungry? Is the baby, does it, uh, you know, do you need a diaper change? All of these things can be done. Um, and then at the end, since, you know, if you look at the way the baby's vocal activity develops, so when they're born, they're just crying. When their cry changes around three months of age, then they start, you know, babbling, malformed words, actual words. We can track all of that. We know exactly how the brain's developed. So that's kind of at the end. So right now, what you're trying to answer is, what does it mean for a baby to be well? But eventually, we want to be everyone. Thank you. So let's open it up to questions for a few minutes. Yeah, perfect. Um, so have you tried using this in an adult to uh, see if you can recapitulate the effects of the sleep study? Yes, so adults is actually uh, a lot easier because the surface that. area of, of an adult's chest is the size of the baby. <laughs> so uh, it is a lot easier. My co-founder is actually testing it on himself right now. So as he sleeps, we track him. Um, the, the stigma with adults is we want to sleep in front of the camera every single day. Um, that's the that's what we need to solve basically for that. Right. 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 So I understand that you may use infrared temperature for pulse rate on the TV. Say that again? So like um for breathing it's chest movement. For right. temperature I could understand that you may use infrared at a time. How about heart rate? Heart rate, every time the heart pumps blood to your body, the color of your cha uh, skin changes ever so slightly. Okay. And that's what we track. How much time? So, there's one person. Yeah. Can you speak louder? When you using the infrared image, the biggest concern is I say. I say. Is it I say? What infrared? Yes, it's, I say it's all, every single baby monitor, any IP camera that you buy has the same. Our, our IP camera is very standard. All the processing is done in the cloud. So we have not done anything to the cameras itself. Okay. Uh, did, other questions? <laughs> no, it's okay. So I have, I have a question. Sure. So this Clary actually looks awesome, and I happen to have a baby about that, sh that should have the Clary. Yes. When am I going to be able to buy one? <laughs> In the next few months. Uh, we are actually going to be launching at the end of the year. We'll be launching with a big retailer um, who has already uh, we'll talked to them. Um, they will be our official launch partner uh, in November, um, but I'll get you one soon. <laughs> <laughs> So temperature is 95% accurate. So it's the way we detect temperature is um, it's a sensor that's using your car for climate control. So there are two sensors that, that are always pointing for drivers and the passengers. And they use that for to understand if you're sweating, to turn off the AC or not. Uh, we just have machine learning algorithms and we're able to detect your temperature. So, at certain point, you mentioned the, the accuracy, right? Yeah. And uh, I remember you mentioned like 85% of that. 
Ninety percent for agreement. Yeah. Okay. So, so a couple of things. So there, if you just think about measuring the way we move, right? There are really many, many conditions, right? It could be at night. I mean, the Uber, as I get to get that. And uh, maybe you can put a blanket on the baby, right? Or the baby can sleep uh, on top, yep. right? Different directions. Yep. I mean, if you factor all these into it, you know, you get ninety percent, or yes. it's more like an right, ideal situation. So the only case that, like. There's still thousands of cameras now. The only case that we basically have not been able to detect breathing on a baby, the way it's sleeping or whatever, has been there was one baby in Alaska this this winter. They placed the baby in some sort of armor type of thing. I don't know, but, but that's the only thing that we have not been able to do. Other, all other ones have not had an issue if you mount the camera properly. Well, so actually, this is part of the question. You know, right. you, well, at least the consumer basic part. You cannot control how consumer. That's why. So the first product, uh, there is. I'm not saying that there's no issues, but unless you mount the camera properly, it's not going to be able to detect. It. This is why we have clarity, where you cannot mess up. You assemble the camera, you place it next to the crib, and it will work. So a follow-up question is when there is ten percent of error, right? In inaccuracy, right? So how do you define that? How bad is it? Right? That's, so ten percent. Uh, the way we came up with that number is comparing with the medical device. So if the medical device says the baby is breathing forty times a minute, <coughs> we were off by four. Or five. Okay, ten percent. Okay, so it's ten percent. The number itself. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, your first generation of clarity. You can move back to algorithms, small devices, stuff like that. Yes, our algorithms um, can run with any video, any camera. It doesn't matter. So we use a generic camera. So oh, okay. if, okay. if we wanted to work with Nest, I've talked to them. Okay. <laughs> How many units do you already have? Uh, between five and ten thousand. And uh, so this, so we just basically we sold a few thousand last year, and we have been kind of this year has been very. Uh, how do I say? The acceleration of growth has been very good. The last two months we are growing two up, two two x. This month we're growing five x. What are the customer support issues you encounter? The biggest issue is setting up of the camera. So this is faced by all IP cameras. This is why DropCam exists, uh, or NestCam to be. Uh, the bit of the problem is. Setting up the Wi-Fi on your camera is very difficult without Bluetooth, and we didn't focus on that when we first started. So our new product, Clarity, has Bluetooth already. Um, but the first generation, this is—it's just a uh, just something we have to live with for now. But, but we are learning how. So initially, we used to get lots of customer service. Um, uh, issues, but now we've uh, uh, how do I say? optimized it enough that you can set it up yourself. Um, 70 80 percent of our customers can set it up themselves. So the, uh, so the app can uh, alert, right? When, 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 when it cannot be detected, right? Or yes. Be the alert, alert the That's so correct. Do you have uh, any calls that have false? Initially, we used to get a lot of them, uh, but nowadays there's not. Uh, if you, you can go look on Amazon, uh, people use it every day now. Uh, the problem, if you set up the camera right, you should not have any issues at all. Is it considered a magic device? And is it regulated? Or or, so we are, are you looking at SIDS at all, or, or yeah, just... we are not a medical device yet. Uh, we're going, we're collecting data. This is why the Stanford study is there. Um, that medical device for us may take, you know, three to five years to do. Um, so we're working towards that. Uh, SIDS. Um, I don't think anybody knows exactly what causes mm -hmm. the SIDS. So we don't claim, claim yeah, that you know. Learning for yeah, everything. we are more a peace of mind. So we, you know, we're trying to give you all the information so you can actually relax as a new parent. Um,
These are not using infrared, it's a normal epic camera. Okay. Um, sampling rate at 30 frames per second, it can detect, you know, the nitrous frequency itself, it can go to 100. Like nobody breeds, you know, more than 20. Maximum, I think, we have ever detected a baby breathing is 30 times a minute, 35. And you don't need that kind of strength. The breathing, the frame rate is very scarce, it's very much. Say that again? So the maximum limit of the frame rate of the camera is very There you go. Good question. You know, I think you just touched on it in your previous answer. You know, I get the breathing, I want to know if the baby's breathing or not. Yeah. But when it comes to like quality of sleep and how much the living, is there anything actionable that parents can take with that? I mean, the peace of mind is definitely valuable when people are buying products for that alone. Um, but, you know, what's actionable off of the other data that you're uh, gathering? I can give you an easy example. So, this last week or two, uh, my son has been taking very short naps, like 45 minute naps. And usually naps around, um, you know, an hour and a half to two and a half hours. And we're going to try and figure out what's going on. Um, and it's not easy to tell. Like, if we don't have what we know, we wouldn't even know this much, right? Um, so now I can go back and say, okay, is he eating something different that's making him wake up or something like that? So basically, uh, to be honest, I don't have the answer. I, I'm not figured it out yet. <laughs> but what I do. Uh, but, but the thing is, we have enough data to actually say, okay, um, this is what you need to do to make them sleep better. But, you know. Like, yeah, and I see the value of gathering that data, especially for the research. But, you know, uh, the parents, are they gravitating towards, they have all this information coming at them, like, right? Like, you know, this year, they're not sleeping as much. The easiest thing that, that the way parents train their babies to go to sleep at night is, you know, you pick a certain time and you try to stick to that every night, but um, it's very difficult to do that. So if you can find that sweet spot, to find the sweet spot that, you know, um, to know that, like, I know my son, if I put him down between 8.30, or sorry, 7.30 and 8, he'll have 10 and a half hours of sleep every single night. But if I put him down, at 8.45, 9 o'clock, he sleeps only like eight and a half, nine hours. So this is, you know, this is, uh, basically the AI will remind me time to put him to sleep now. Okay. Have, have you added social uh, factors, like other family members, yes, you friends that all are having kids at the same time? We have added family members. Uh, we are starting to do all the sharing, social sharing, uh, social media reach out so uh, basically our new app supports you just tweeting Instagramming your pictures or video um, one of our popular features that parents want uh, is actually just a, a, a simple time series of the baby so taking snapshots during the day when the baby is actually there and creating a video for some reason people love it <laughs> and, and does that just help promote the business yes no. yes they share it on Facebook so people know if it's brand new. We have time for one more question. Okay. What about extensions to other sectors? For example, um, the sleep apnea and so on. Exactly. And sleep disruption. So we're working with several, uh, or we're starting to um, think about working with like uh, senior care centers. Um, and then the, the, the sleep apnea thing that uh, we need to get FDA approval. So we are working towards test getting more test subjects for adults. Um, but we know like the technology actually can work on um, well, it's easier. So we're definitely moving towards that as we conquer the data. <laughs> okay. Let's uh thank you. thank you so much. So I actually have the V1 version of this. It's amazing. It took me like I don't know, two minutes to set it up to answer your question. It's a great, great, great product. Um, okay, so up next we have
watch our X and and then we only have one other startup that is going to um, be presenting actually from Shenzhen. So it's a weird, it's a, a rare thing that we have this opportunity. But anyway, so let me just set this up and um, give me one second. So here's your mic. And if you would like, you can use this to control it. Otherwise, you're ready to go. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Jayanti Narsimhan, uh, founder and CEO of WatchRx. How many of you have aging parents, taking care of aging parents? Uh, how many times have you often wondered that whether they are taking the right medication at the right time? So that has been the most challenging problem for me as a caregiver. So medication non-adherence is the biggest problem that affects the life of quality of life for those with multiple chronic conditions and also those who are taking care of them with multiple chronic conditions. So here I am uh, here to tell you about all about medication adherence. These are my parents. They live in India and I live in Massachusetts. So three years ago, my mom fell sick and then she was given a lot of medications. And she often uh, forgot to take her medication, so she had to go back to hospital. I have been trying to help her and my dad to take medications. I used to call them every day. And I was thinking there has to be a simple solution that would work for them as a reminder and to let me know that uh, they are taking their medications. Most of them are app-based and they are not uh, using apps, smartphones at 70 plus. So it's extremely hard for them to use anything like that. So that's how WatchRx was born. So WatchRx is a three-phase solution. Essentially, it has a smartwatch for seniors, very simple, dedicated, no apps on it. And it, it uh, does have a GPS and a built-in phone. And that helps them stay healthy and independent. And it has an app for the family caregivers, like son or daughter, whoever is taking care of them, to receive the alerts and have peace of mind. And it also has a dashboard for physicians, nurses, or professional caregivers who can monitor their health. So medication on adherence costs US economy around $290 billion. There are about 45 million seniors today, 90% of them live alone home here in the United States. And there are about 43.5 million caregivers like us who take care of our parents. And almost 60% of them stressed out, juggling between their job, family, and caregiving. A typical family caregiver spends about 24 hours taking care of their parents. So it, it's been a lot of stress for them. And also, one third of all hospital admissions among seniors is due to medication on adherence. And that costs about $100 billion a year. And almost 15 to $25 billion per year is spent on readmission. That is within 30 days that they get back to the hospital because they don't take their medications. And this, this is an ongoing problem for pharmaceutical industry as well. Just uh, per year, the pharmaceutical industry loses about $188 billion just because of my medication on it here. Globally, it's about $564 billion, and it amounts to close to 59% of their total annual revenue. So that's where the WatchRx is trying to build a bridge the gap between the seniors, the caregivers, and the uh, professional care team to make sure that the seniors are able to take care of their medications and live independent. Until now, the, most of the solutions, there are some solutions out there that there are apps to remind you, there are, there are mostly silo solutions that they, there is no connected solutions that are out there. And also, it is not something that can be personalizable that gives control to the patient that, OK, I can take care of my own medications, and especially seniors. And also, it's not integrated to give family caregiver and the professional care team a feedback loop to make sure that the medication is taken at the right time. 
So what WatchRx has is a smartwatch, it's a built-in phone and a GPS. So the medication reminders are visual medication reminders with the name, image, and display. Uh, display of name, image, as well as voice instructions, which can be customized. And the way that the process works is it reminds them uh, first, and if they don't take it, every 15 minutes it will go through until uh, an hour. And then if they still don't take it, it will generate uh, alerts to the caregiver. So they can call back the watch as it has the phone, or they can uh, send a text messages. So we have a generic uh, messaging framework that allows you to personalize any type of medication reminders or even other radio reminders to take food or exercise or water or pre-op or post-op uh, instructions. So anything can be given. And we have a caregiver app that's uh, very easy for them to follow the alerts and they can uh, take action on the alerts. Basically, by clicking on the alert, they can send back a message to the watch or they can call the watch from the app directly. And they also have, the, we can define a geofence, the GPS geofence. So once it crosses, the watch automatically calls the caregiver and then uh, uh, tell them that where they are and we provide every minute update on a GP, uh, uh, Google map on the smartphone app. And for the hospitals and uh, 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 professional caregivers, we have a dashboard where they can monitor their medication appearance. So this is the watch feature. So basically, we will have a take me home GPS and a built-in phone. And uh, we also have other alerts like idle. The watch is not being worn. So we do collect data points. So we will be able to tell if the watch is idle, whether it's being charged or taken out of the charger. And uh, we have a dashboard. We also collect uh, 250 plus behavioral data points based on whether they are sleeping, whether the watch is idle, whether how many times that we have to remind them, and whether it, there is a slow deterioration in terms of uh, reminding them. So, we, and also suppose let us say that they sleep for two hours every day and suddenly it has, uh, slowly it is increasing, then we can provide them on uh, trending as to how the seniors are doing. So based on that, we can provide some kind of early warning predictive analytics. And we also provide, um, uh, as the uh, professional care team manages the patient, because that it has a built-in phone, they have a increased engagement with the patient. Because phone, most often, the seniors don't have it with them, and they don't really know where they have kept it, or they don't pick it up. So having a phone on the watch helps them in many ways for an easy access. So with this solution, I was able to, uh, my mom was able to get her alerts and she uses the watch and I'm able to get the alerts saying that yes, uh, she has taken the medication and I can call her. So even though I'm here in Boston and she is in India, so we don't have a distance problem in terms of talking to and getting the actual reminder system working. So here is a quick video of- Do you often forget or get confused about your medications? Will you be able to get help if you fall taking a shower? You cannot move. WatchRx provides a dedicated smartwatch, which gives medication reminders that display an image of the medication along with the dosage. It also has a dedicated SIM to make or receive phone calls without having to pair with a cell phone. A GPS chip in smartwatch also notifies your caregiver if you wander out of your home. Your caregiver can live track the person and call the smartwatch directly. And most importantly, it is a watch, and hence, no stigma of wearing a medical device. Yeah, and also, it's very really easy for a caregiver to go through our web interface and uh, provide a schedule. When do they wake up? When do they have their meals? Because prescription most often associated either with the meals or a fixed time. So they can easily do it. They can also create the medications with the image and what kind of uh, schedules that they should follow. So we offer both the type of uh, medication schedule. So this would be inputted by the. Uh, I'm talking. Right here. This would be input by the care by the caregiver or by the hospital. 
uh, depends. I am working on both models. So, uh, in in the case of setting with the family, that the uh, caregivers actually do it. In the case of hospitals, the pharmacist at the hospital actually does the medication inputs. Okay. So, so the, uh, the alerts are sent to the smartphone, so they can receive. For example, when they receive an alert and when they tap. It will uh, prompt them to say either remind again or call the watch. So they can do that. And um, from the hospital perspective, they will have a physician or the pharmacist account as well as the nurse. So they can assign the nurse, they can get a list of all patients, and they can get medication adherence report for a group of patients under a nurse or for type of patients with a different disease. So there's various levels of adherence reports that they can get. So this also gives a consolidated view of all the patients. They can go and edit. So this, here is our medication list. So from the market perspective, the telehealth is an emerging market. There are about 200 plus uh, providers today in the United States. And the current market value is about 878 million. It's expected to go to 130 billion by the year 2025. In 2016, there were about 7 million patients who were enrolled in remote uh, patient monitoring. So uh, nowadays, a lot of uh, seniors are recommended to get enrolled, especially when they have multiple chronic conditions. And just last year, um, CMS had approved reimbursement of remote patient monitoring uh, monthly subscription fees. And this number is supposed to go to 50 million by the year 2025. And increasingly, home care is also looking to use technologies to improve patient engagements and also improve their quality of care. And the hospitals are uh, looking for uh, uh, digital technology solutions. One is for the inpatient care, especially for diseases such as Parkinson, where the medications are really time bound and they have to take. And also uh, transitional care, because of the 30 day readmission penalty imposed on the hospitals. Nowadays, the hospitals are required to monitor them. Most of the hospitals now have started personally engaging nurses to talk to them every day. So that's another area that hospitals are looking into using the watch. Uh, and also pre-op and post-op uh, instructions, delivery of instructions and uh, uh, directions to the patients. <clears throat> So we have had a number of success in the last two years. Uh, we have been selected by Google and Boston Scientific, and Google is sponsoring our uh, platform technology, and Boston Scientific is sponsoring some of our trials. And uh, recently, of course, we have enrolled in TechCode and Bayer. We also won the ARP's uh, top 50 innovators for uh, aging market. They won Women to Watch the Science and Technology by Boston Business Journal. So then there are various other accelerators and everybody. So currently we are doing a hospital trial with uh, Hackensack Hospital in New Jersey. We are we also have a customer, a telehealth customer, who we are working to integrate with uh, with their platform, and we are talking to more telehealth customers as of now. So the first Parkinson trial is what we are doing We're currently about 150 patients. We've also uh, uh, worked on a trial details with Boston Scientific on a, a heart patients and doing the medication adherence for them. And um, diabetes, I already did some of the searches with individual patients, but I haven't really done a group uh, trial yet. And uh, smoking cessation, this is for a substance abuse that we are working with Virginia Commonwealth University on the trial. And uh, we are also some of the high tracers that they have talked to us uh, regarding using a watch for their homeless. In summary, the watch RX attempts to bridge the gap between the seniors, the caregivers, importantly, and the uh, patient care team so that we can provide an integrated, coordinated solution that helps the patient to live independently and also helps the caregivers to reduce their stress level and as well as help the patient care team to see improved medication adherence and reduce the cost. So here is support from our uh, partner from Telecal. So essentially he is looking for something that where they can engage and talk to the patients and the watch with the phone with their medication report it helps them quite a bit. 
Thank you. Did you want to try and do the demo? Or? Oh, she had to do um, Yeah, so she, she actually brought a watch, and I'll hold this. If you want to, what, what can I do to help? Where you go? Or you want to, yeah, you should share it with everyone. Yeah. So I have just put it in my demo board. Right now, the product actually is in the market, and uh, also the hospital is looking as well as some individual solutions. So. They can personalize section So for those of you that can't see, the watch is actually communicating the specific image of the pill as well as the dosage and the time and I think how to take it, right? Yeah, how to take it. It's before, for it, after, for Okay. So it's the entire rationale of the medication that the patient should take. So they can also divide from that from the Hold the mic there. Charger soon. <laughs> My battery is fully charged now. You can take me out of the charger and wear me. So this is the GPS alert, so you can uh, do a pen. GPS a alert has been activated. Your son has been alerted. Calling your emergency contact for help. So for the emergency, that you can touch yours and you get the contact. That's all you can do with the so I'm going to try that. Hello. She's the caregiver, right? You're the. Hello. I'll repeat it. Calling your emergency contact. <laughs> She's gonna call you for everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, of course, I enjoy it. <laughs> okay. So this is excellent. Thank you so much for the demo. If you guys have any questions, um... can, can you just keep it? for dedicated watch. We don't want the seniors to be struggling with I mean, if they were able to use the Apple Watch, they would be able to use the app on the smartphone. So it's really the problem with it being dedicated. Whereas Android watches, they will allow you to dedicate an application. That means I don't have to run any other application. It will automatically sum up. It will work. I don't have to do The seniors don't even have to do it. All they do is uh, just uh, charge and wear it. The Apple Watch, that's one problem. The second problem is this has its own SIM card, built in uh, Apple Watch users eSIM, and uh, it is not, at least there are a few people who have used the Apple Watch, the phone is not really working well. So it's uh, something that the eSIM technology still has to be proven out there. So, but the real SIM, this watch is with the real SIM, they work perfectly well. But I could use any Android watch. It doesn't have to be manufactured by us. I could use Android tablets. Uh, so those things I can use, but I definitely cannot use the Apple products yet. So 
device and the subscription, yes. And uh, we also in future would allow bring your own device. So if you had your own Android watch, you bought it, you would be able to put the software on you. But then it would become dedicated. So that way it is meant for seniors. So we would do that. But bringing their own device is not an issue. What's the camera for? We are also going to be, as a feature product pipeline, we are going to be incorporating a fall reduction into the watch as well. So it already has accelerometer, it has a positioning and it has camera. So using the camera, we are going to be taking snapshots of that and be able to come up with that if they have actually fallen and you could automatically call. Right now for GPS, the watch automatically calls the caregiver. They don't even have to call. Same way for fall detection, we'll be able to call automatically. Develop the um, fall detection algorithm itself. Can you work with the project? There is a fall detection algorithm already exists for a watch, so we are talking to them. So if there is something already existing, we would not reinvent it because that's not going to bring IP to us. Are you selling the watch and the subscription and talk about pricing a bit? I uh, yes. That would be the price. So this is the business model. So we have a watch price of $99 to $140. It's a base price one time. And we have various subscription prices. It starts at $999. $999 will be only the Wi-Fi based medication reminder, but the phone will be extra, whereas $1999 per month includes the phone. And also we'll have a GPS or additional $10. Then we will have a predictive analytics. So the, it depends on what type of features, because I had customers who wanted only GPS and no medication reminders. I had customers who wanted GPS and medication reminders. So uh, we do provide a packaging price based on what they need. Are those, are those uh, cell phones, is that in addition to what the cell phone, what the operating company would charge? No, the other prices, whenever you opt for the phone option, also includes phone plan. So we do have a, uh, we are working with T-Mobile, so we do have a deal from them to do that, yeah. When your product will be launched? Product is already launched. Already so, yeah. When? Uh, they, we did it last quarter and last year, so we are just, uh, currently we are working B2B models, so we are working with the telehealth companies and hospitals and uh, senior living homes. But if anybody wants to buy, they can come online and buy, but uh, we are not uh, advertising into social media or anything. Um, does it have a feature where when you call it, you have to, it answers for you, or do you have to actually choose to answer it through the, I don't know, it's Verizon or T-Mobile kids phone that automatically The auto answer. Pardon? You are talking about auto answer. Here. Yeah, auto answer, we thought about it, but then we talked to a few uh, the seniors. We did a lot of focus groups with the seniors, but it looks like that the preference for auto answer is not there, so what they suggested was, we should know that we are answering and we don't want any auto answer. So that's not, doesn't seem to be at least a preferred feature for seniors, but it's very easy to incorporate because we do do auto calls for GPS, but. Uh, it's up to the seniors to decide. So, I need this for my aging grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? Um, okay. I do you have one slide I think specifically for uh, Bayer. So, essentially, how we could work with Bayer on various. Uh, trials that we have already planned for with either hospitals or Boston Scientific or someone. And one another application is that, I've not mentioned it here, but I have included in my patent, is to do a phase three clinical trial for pharma because uh, they do use mechanical uh, diary nowadays to record that, but I'm thinking how to take it forward to do a feedback mechanism because side effects can be uh, actually recorded. So if you take a new medication and if you had a side effect, 
Right now, you don't have to wait for the doctor appointment. You can actually record your voice and then say, these are the side effects I had. It gets actually recorded and whoever is conducting the clinical trial can actually receive it. Great. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that if the bear team uh, has any other, you know, follow up, we'll, maybe they should digest this and then we'll go to that. Okay. Um, so I think we're good to go. Oh, yeah, well, I'm sorry, I'm not ignoring you. It's okay. So, can you talk about the IQ, IQ protection? Yes. Um, our IP is filed for one is the medication reminder process that we are doing the display of the name, image, dosage, voice instructions, and also the process that we repeat. We work with the physician as to how typically the medicines that they are prescribed and within how much time that they should really take it for better efficacy. So based on that, that we provide. So if you are going to take a medication with meals, then we provide up to one hour every 15 minutes. If you are going to take uh, medication that is fixed time, then we do within 15 minutes, every three minutes. So these are some of the things that are recorded in the patent. And also um, we have recorded the communication with the caregiver and the coordination between the caregiver and the physician teams as well as uh, the what. We have uh, recorded the early warning predictive analytics and what data points that we measure. So those are in it. And also the phase three uh, pharmaceutical the clinical trials. So we put it on the patient. Okay. okay. Any other questions? No? Okay. Thank you. Very, very, very compelling demo. Um, thank you so much. So we only have one more, and this is a uh, uh, a startup that I'm going to join in Shenzhen from Skype. So you guys just give me one second. One second. Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Hi guys. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. I'm going to turn this around so they can see everyone, and I'm going to um, once this hopefully works. Hey, hi, hi. So, can you see our, our uh, audience here? Yes. Okay. Hi, all. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Hi. So, um, we have uh, Kimmy. Uh, this is the team from a really, really great um, athletics company um, called My Skills. I'm going to turn it over to you guys, and if there's any delay with the, uh, the deck, let me know. I can run the deck from my laptop, and I also have your videos here. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me just make sure. Can you guys hear the? Can you say hello or something? Hello. <laughs> hello. Can you hear us? Hello. Hi. Okay. Okay. So you guys are up. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So nice to meet you all. My name is uh, Raul. This is Kenny, hello. and our project is called My Skills. Um, so let me put on. But we're, we're not sharing the screen, right? Uh, we do not see a shared screen. I see your face. I can turn on my screen if we need to. Yeah, thank you to turn on yours. Yeah, no problem. Um, sorry guys, just one second. Uh, let's see. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I have your slide deck, so when you want me to change the slides, just say next slide or... Yeah, just... Um, so the slide deck is All right. Okay. 
So um, our project is my skills. We are developing a smartwatch that improves, helps uh, players improve their skills and connect with the community. So our project um, started as a community to help people find um, players around them when they were missing someone to play with. And then we developed uh, the, the smartwatch that will help the players um, measure their skills and train smarter. All right, so can we play the first video? Uh, yeah. Let's see if this works. Okay, one second. Okay. Okay, it's playing. Okay, the first video has been played and I'm going to go back to your slide deck, okay? It's on page three right now. Yeah, page three. All right. So uh, this is a very important fact uh, that we found uh, making surveys, talking to people, researching on the internet. And the fact is that more than 70% of young players don't make it to semi-pro or pro players, mostly because they quit too early. Um, can we go to the next one? So what's the main problem? The main problem um, is, is one that players, they, uh, they lose interest in the sports that they're playing. Uh, if, if they don't find it uh, so interesting as starting new people to play with, um, <laughs> there are other parts, other areas that are not taken care of, like nutrition, uh, how to eat properly. When you're uh, young, you don't know how to eat properly, you don't know uh, what type of food you should eat before, during, and after training, um, how to avoid injuries. Um, it's, it's difficult to connect with new players or new people around your community, and most importantly, it's very difficult to measure your skills, to measure how uh, you're improving if there are certain skills that are not improving as fast as others, unless you have a personal training looking after you and telling you what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, it's difficult to measure yourself. So those are the main problems uh, for young athletes. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Ted. Yeah, okay, we're on the value proposition. Yeah, so what are we proposing? Um, my skills uh, will help players quantify their... will help players uh, quantify their skills. With the watch, they'll be able, um, through machine learning and big data, to improve their skills and analyze their game. Uh, we will help them to create good nutrition habits, good eating habits before, during, and after training. Uh, we'll help them measure their um, muscle overloads so they can prevent injuries. And uh, one of the most important features of our project is a community. We will help them find uh, players to play with around their area. We will help them uh, to share this uh, information from their skills within a specific platform for sportsmen, that is something that we don't have yet, 
you know, there are platforms for every type of hobby. There are specific platforms for traveling, for finding restaurants, for anything you want. But there is not a specific platform for sports. So this is a project that we already have in South America, but we want to replicate and bring this to China. OK. Uh, the next slide, please. So the main features are big counter, smart alarm, and heat map. Uh, and then we have some added value um, features, which are nutrition, injuries, and the community. So which are the main features and the benefits? The first one is the smart alarm. Uh, this will collect the information that you provide about your game and will create uh, alarms to let you know when you're entering some critical part of your game. So for example, if you are uh, scoring um, a lot of good shots, a lot of good double points when you're playing basketball, for example, you're scoring a lot of double points in the first 30 minutes of your game. but from the minute 30 to the 60, your efficiency decreased considerably from 70 to 20%. Yeah. So um, the smart alarm will let you know that you're entering this critical point of your game. The counter is a feature that will help you um, count your skills. So you'll be able to say how many double points you're scoring, how many you're missing, how many triple points you're scoring or missing, and that will give you your efficiency rate. And the heat map, that's the one that's going to tell you which part of the field you're moving. If you're moving correctly, if your skills are coherent with your movements. So this will help you analyze your game a lot better. Then we have the nutrition. Um, in the nutrition, we'll have a few features like deadly water reminder, what type of food you need to eat before, during, and after the game. Uh, we have the My Skills community, which um, if you want to play, but you're missing one or two players to complete a team, this will help you connect with people around your area that wants to play um, and injuries, that this is mostly for muscle overloads. So you can register. Uh, some specific injuries that you've been having and um, the app will measure what you were doing before you got you got injured before you you got injured and uh, so it, it, it will it will tell you when injure again, right? So it will prevent future uh, injury. All right, Ted, can we play then the the second video? Okay, one second. I'm going to play the second video. Okay. Okay, uh, we just played the second video and I'm going back to the slide deck. We're on um, the 10th slide now, my profile. Okay, so as you saw in the two videos, uh, one is uh, to explain how the community works, um, how the injury works. The second one is to explain the counter, which is one of our main features. And if uh, users can use the counter properly, all the other features will be perfect as they have. So uh, with the counter, they can and to share it in the community. So the slide that you see now, these are files. Uh, 
the profile is displayed. You have a uh, you have um, some specific information like color rating, uh, average speed. Uh, you have some of your injuries of so how many days you've been, and how is your battery? If yes, or if you continue playing for a long time, you have to heat up and you can take winning. Okay. The next slide. You see how players prepare to their uh, skill, the community, with their friends, uh, with their friends, with their peers who play sports with them. But this can also be very important to share, for example, coaches, coaches from universities, coaches from co teams. So we want to create a platform where it's very specific enforcement uh, and then become like uh, friends for pro and pro players and pro. Now we're gonna go a little bit into the Chinese market which is uh, focused now. We live in Shenzhen, we make uh, we know province very well. So we to do establish our business here. We have our factory here and the Chinese smart watch market is the biggest in the world. It has a, a five point eight billion dollar credit this year, which is a huge uh, market value. There are so many uh, brands coming out. So we can see in the next slide, we can see the global growth which China is uh, bigger than any other country by far. Almost 3 billion. And in the next slide, um, some in a competitive analysis of the Chinese market. So first, China is the highest market for us. Mark what the world. Second is that uh, our techniques that so them focus only in lifestyle and watch, not them focus on very specific niche like sports like us. We are starting to teach like me, Samsung. They're mostly focusing on lifestyle kind of watch. It are players from 15 to 20 years old. This is an opposite market because most of the watches are between 20 to 35 years old. So third generation is not being a but in China this is a very very market especially for the family for the family church that uh in both has and there is even 20% of the population are kids under 15 years old. And all these kids are of potential. And last one, uh, there are over and in China. So the sports culture is all very strong. In the next slide, we'll see the difference between my skills and other very famous brands like Apple uh, As you can see, the more focus in the selfie, so not this big competitive, uh, very big focus on sports for Garmin, but they're also very different. In the next slide, we'll see a for channels, how we're gonna and how uh, distribute our product. So the first one is with Kickstarter. We have a campaign plan well Kickstarter to we already did a campaign for, uh, very successful and uh, technology 
develop now. And now we'll have a second one. Then we have the local will help us uh, spread the product of in product uh, within our own thing. And then we have that big collection like Taobao, AD, uh, these are e com platforms, which are very, very famous in China and they sell a lot of products. It's very helps through these channels. And last one is second one. Free software with which we have already had a lot of uh, we have a very good relationship with it in very big store here in China and we may be able to sell our product there. So that will give us a presence store and retail store. In the next slide we'll see how we start to distribute the, the production. I'm sorry, how to distribute. So it will go to production, research and develop, monthly improve, add, improving the features and, and then we have marketing, promote the product and the operation. Next one, we have the financial plan. So our factory, the factory products, the two factories, the watches. And so the first time when we did that, we negotiated a first batch of product, which will be with a little bit of a high price because like the new watch and all. But from the second batch of production, our cost will go to half. So from the second uh, production, our revenues will double. Um, so that's a uh, general of look for costs of production and it's a plan to sell. Plan to make a very profit that is also affordable. We want uh, the first was around 150 dollars and we'll be able to run around 100 dollars batch of production. And in some of the um, we have our team, we have the team uh, Vietnam was a graphic designer, a team of software developers, software and product advisors of the population. And that's that. Thank you. Excellent. Um, thank you so much. I'm going to go off of the deck here and then put you guys back up on the screen so you can see everyone, okay? Can you can you see everybody? Yes. Okay. Um, so thank you so much. It, great presentation. The videos were very entertaining. Um, do you guys in the audience have any questions for the team? We've kind of seen them over the last couple months build this out, and it's it's, it's coming along very nicely. Um, do you guys have any questions? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, probably more of a comment. I have a son that uh, went through all these sports when he was young, and I think definitely the U.S. might uh, might be uh, uh, more. Um, I don't know. I mean, I kind of have the both culture than China and U.S. I think that people here, especially California, kids play a lot of sports, and a lot of times overtraining and a sport uh, sports injury prone. And I think this app would be very useful. China, maybe there are a lot of kids are playing sports, but the intensity is a lot less than, for instance, California. So obviously, I see the whole team is based in uh, Shenzhen, uh, maybe more for the manufacturer side or something. So just a comment, I'm, I'm thinking um, probably more easy, uh, easily, uh, easier to scale up here in terms of my gift. Because uh, here, like all these kids playing basketball or soccer, they have the knee pad, they have the 
knee uh, strap or ankle support, all these things, and a skill would, would have a lot of injuries. Um, so her, her comment is that uh, you should not discount the market here in the U.S. because mm -hmm. there's a lot of children, uh, there's a lot of athletes here, there's a lot of kids that will be playing sports and they may want to, uh, to be able to track what they're doing so they can, uh, they can excel at, at the sport. Um, and also this might help with uh, injury prevention here. So just, uh, you know, not only the Chinese market, but she's suggesting that you should North America. Take, take into account the North American market as well. It might be a good... Probably more appropriate because I think the Chinese market, there's a lot of population, but uh, I don't think parents put a lot of emphasis on the sports as much as here. Okay. Thank you, by the way. Great presentation. Did you guys hear the comment? Yes, yes, thank you. And we completely agree with you. Uh, this market is very important. It is, uh, has also a very culture of technology and you know, measuring things. But we decided to go with Tyson of what we've seen in our community. Um, we're not taking up other markets, it's just like because we, we, we need to start so we we decided to start with China uh, because it also have a very good uh, technology culture here so many people are watching uh, we see three or four blocks and they're always packed with people uh, yeah, hey guys, I'm going to switch okay. the camera off and just go to uh, to voice. We just we, let's just do talking now. It's a little bit weird. We can't hear. I think maybe the bandwidth or something. Blame me. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go. Are there any other questions maybe about the production? Yeah, Dirk. Dirk. So, so when you uh, when you showed the demo, it's uh, it's all about basketball. Um, what what other sports or use cases are you aiming for? Okay, um, so is this watch can able to utilize voice recognition uh, to say, you know, I scored two points or I scored a three-pointer or something like that. Yes, completely. It's very horrible. It, it has also been a part of our plan to in our next step, in our next version to do it with both. Okay, so like a, a next iteration or a next uh, feature set might be voice recognition. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so another question. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the very good market strategy in China. Uh, I think it's important to connect to some, you know, like in China, probably uh, like the sports is the last month. Emphasize in school for the academic achievement. But uh, there's also like a cultural problem. Uh, like the government is not able to continue to win big wins in other big games. So do they go to like the internet to win type of thing? Like, so the question is for only focus on the internet. Uh, the question <laughs> is, is is your go to market strategy um, focused solely on a direct-to-consumer play, where you're selling your watch and services to consumers directly, or is there an, uh, a B2B play as well, maybe where you could sell multiple quantities of watches to uh, some type of athletic club or something like that in order to, to have uh, you know, more traction? Yes, completely. We were also focusing on our especially because, um, like the smallest teams or kids, they have a foreign. Um, 
here in Shenzhen, in Wakong province, many international and foreign coaches come here train all sorts of teams from field kids to professional. So we also plan uh, to create uh, like a partnership with this folk to do uh, and and the school, you know, like the, the, the train uh, to do a B two B negotiation. Okay, that's a really that's a good strategy. That was the comment. Um, I think we have maybe one more time for one more question. Um, and then we can do follow-ups after. Is there, are there any other questions? So I, I have a question. Are, uh, other than um, uh, the Kickstarter uh, crowdfunding campaign in order to raise uh, some financial capital, are you guys uh, planning on raising money from you know, outside investors? Are you trying to, I think I saw you're trying to raise 100K or the equivalent of 100K. And then comes to make for uh, investors in China. Um, All right. And then, other than that, does anyone else have any questions or comments? Um, no. I'm. This is Ted. I'm personally excited about the heat map. Um, I'm gonna play Michael in tennis hopefully soon, and I would like to know where I'm scoring points on him. So <laughs> if I can get that and, and use the watch to to learn learn that, it would be very helpful. For me, so. Anyway, guys, we really appreciate you doing this. I know it's early on Saturday morning, and um, I will follow up with you uh, on Monday with uh, next steps with Tech Code and also with Bear. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Ted. Thank you guys so much. You've done an excellent job over the last, you know, three months putting this together. It was really, really well done presentation. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I guess. Okay, so we are done, and I'm sorry we had some technical difficulties. Sometimes that happens when you're trying to do live uh, streaming presentations from overseas. It's just kind of comes with the territory a little bit, but we were able to get through it. So thank you for bearing with me. Um, we do have some refreshments in the back. This was not like a uh, you know, first, second, third prize competition. This was kind of like the culmination of a few months of work. Um, we're going to follow up with startups in the next week uh, with next steps with Bear and also with TechCode. I'll have a, some ideas on what TechCode can do to continue to work with you guys. And then um, uh, I'll, I'll get some feedback from the Bear team, the Bear team as well. Um, I'd like to thank our, our guests for coming. Thank you so much for, for coming. And um, uh, investors, thank you as well. Please enjoy some of the refreshments. And I really want to just give the startup another round of applause. I, I think we might want to do a photo if it's possible. Maybe we can go with right out in the front real quick and just do a, a photo with everybody. And then um, and then we can go from there. Networking and just a few minutes of you know refreshments. So thank you guys so much. Thank you, Ted. Thanks, uh, drop. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. We're, 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 I, there's not, I was trying to be.